Last time on the Honours Channel, we heard from Dr. Tian Xu about the long-term use and safety of synthetic vitamin A, otherwise known as tretinoin. Dr. Tian is an emergency doctor who also has her own aesthetics clinic in which she focuses on prevention, rejuvenation and enhancement when it comes to anti-aging. And I know, like me, a lot of you value her straightforward and easy to understand advice. And she's back today to tell us something the skincare industry really don't want us to hear. And that's that we are potentially overusing cosmetic products to the detriment of our skin. Dr. Tian is among a number of experts featured on this channel, alongside regular and independent product and treatment reviews from me, a journalist focused on bringing you independent and unbiased information and advice. So, if you want to see more videos from this channel, don't forget to hit subscribe along with the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Now, let's hear from Dr. Tian on why too many products could be negatively affecting the health of our skin. Dr. Tian, it's great to have you on the channel again. Thank you so much for sparing me uh, some more of your, your precious time. Um, the last time we spoke, we were having a chat after doing an interview and I was really interested to hear you say that you don't use moisturiser. So can you tell me like how that came around and, and why you feel that's better for your skin? Hi Claire, thank you for having me back. It's all great to be here as always. Um, yeah, so I've had a quite an interesting skin journey myself. I went from, you know, I never really had major problems as a, a, a teenager, you know, in my twenties, I had more or less perfect skin. I didn't use anything. I didn't need to. I just washed my face with water. I, I'm kind of horrified to, to <laughs> when I think back on what I used to do. But then I moved to London when I was about 26, 27, and suddenly my face just flared up in this rash, my cheeks, my mouth, and uh, like around my mouth. And uh, it was there for about two years and I get spots on top of it. I thought it was acne, tried using products, didn't work. Anyway, it was around that time I started um, learning about uh, facial aesthetics and I discovered medical grade skincare through that sort of journey and I thought well let me try that myself so um so at that point when I was having the the rash and even before leading up a few years leading up to it my face was definitely getting more dry and I was getting to a point where every time after I washed my face I would have to run to put my moisturizer on because it was so uncomfortable and you know you you read in magazines people always say oh uh, you know in order to look after your skin well you need to um cleanse tone moisturize right mm -hmm. like gradually i was finding that i was having to use richer and richer moisturizer to make my skin feel more comfortable because it was mm -hmm. just getting more dry and i think the rash didn't help either um, but after I started using these medical grade skincare products and, and really started to see my skin turn around and to improve, um, then over time, after about, I would say, three months, once I've seen the results, once I, my skin stabilized and I started to wean off those products, I found that my skin wasn't feeling tight and uncomfortable after I washed it. So then I didn't really need to put the moisturizer on. And actually through the training that I had for um, when I was learning about skin health and medical grade skincare, it, I, I realized that or I, I learned that the skin actually when the skin is healthy and youthful, it's active. So the skin can produce, should be able to produce its own moisturizing elements. That's a hyaluronic acid that's in the skin that's mm -hmm. responsible for holding the water there in the skin so when the skin is active it produces enough hyaluronic acid to keep the skin moisturized so you shouldn't need to put external moisture into the skin so then skin the skin can become lazy if that's the case if there's too much mm -hmm. moisture it then stops producing its own moisture and over time the skin can become less active and more lazy okay um, and this is why as people age the skin tends to become a bit drier as well and then they put more moisturizer on then it becomes more drier so you're kind of treating a symptom but not the cause do you recommend this is this doable for any age or are you saying this is really for younger skin when it's active it's able to produce its own moisture moisture does it there come a point uh with older skin where you need to 
to add moisture? Um, probably most people at some point will need a bit of extra help to moisturize mm -hmm. the skin. Um, but this is, you know, this is very individual. And I think in general, people start becoming dependent on moisturizer too early because you know i've got two small children they never put anything on their face their skin is just perfect so if we can do what we can to maintain the activity of the skin through using medical grade skincare products through some skin treatments to keep to maintain the activity then i believe we can actually maintain that youthfulness of the skin for quite a long time and it means it may mean that we we won't need a moisturizer for a long time but then whether when you start to need a moisturizer really depends on your skin so hormonal yeah. issues environmental issues changing of the weather might mean that sometime some point in your life some some point during the year you might need to use um, a moisturizer where maybe in the summer you don't need it but maybe in the winter you might need to use a lighter one um, or if your skin is a little bit on the dry side, maybe because you are a bit older or maybe there's some hormonal issues that means your skin is more dry. Sometimes gen certain genetic issues can mean that you just genetically have drier skin. So if you do need to use a moisturizer, that's fine, you can use it. But what I'm saying is don't overuse it. And actually, if your skin mm -hmm. is dry, then before you just slap loads of moisturizer mm -hmm. on, you try to look at the things that's causing that dryness and if it is the fact that your skin is just not as active as it could be then try to stimulate it a bit to make it more active and then that will improve the dryness stimulating the skin how 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 would we do that so previously we talked about tretinoin i talk mm -hmm. a lot about retinol being the most powerful anti-aging ingredient so retinols tretinoin uh, these are probably the most potent stimulating um, ingredients that we can use on the skin um, and they work by stimulating the the cell renewal so the cell regenerates quicker um, and then it, it produces more of the, the hyaluronic acid also more collagen more elastin to make the skin more pump more pump, more plump and stronger and um, you know more elastic so it's less saggy so in terms of skincare, adding in a retinol or a tretinoin can really help with um, with the hydration. Having said that, I know you are currently using some tretinoin and you're finding that your skin is quite dry. Now, there is a difference between the skin being flaky and it looks dry mm -hmm. to the skin actually being dry. Mm -hmm. So with the tretinoin, what it's doing is it's, it's making your skin reproduce faster and it's shedding the the dead skin cells faster so it's kind of in the early stages it's constantly peeling and because yeah. when the skin is peeling you most people think it's dry but actually deep down in the skin it's not dry and if you let's say if you stop using tretinoin for a week or something like that mm -hmm. then you will find that your skin would be less dry than before maybe now once your skin is kind of recovered from the the tretinoin and it's not peeling you'll find that it, it will be less dry it should be because at the moment i feel like if i didn't use moisturizer my skin might actually crack and fall off but <laughs> that's just an extreme it is cracking and falling off that's it, is. it. <laughs> yeah. it's like re reptilian scales yeah um gosh you know you took me back when you were talking there about the mistakes of our youth and i mean i remember i must have only been about 14 15 and just wanting to use skincare because it made me feel more mature and um my mom did buy us clinique and i don't know if you've ever used that toner it was like paint stripper on 14 year old skin and so i immediately got into that cycle of drying out my skin then heaping on moisturizer and my skin being really oily and I wish I'd just left it be, I really do. Is there a weaning process if we want to sort of try this, try using less moisturizer, you know, instead of using my normal dollop, might it just be a start just to use a tiny amount of moisturizer and see how much I can kind of pull it back? So generally, if I have a new client coming to me, ask, having skin, skin consultation, and then I'm giving them advice, I normally would, when I start their regime initially with retinols and things, I would 
normally recommend a light moisturizer with that, unless the skin normally is very, very dry. If the skin is more is, you know, normal or combination skin, I would recommend just a light moisturizer um, when they first start the retinol. And I would say once you've done this first kind of cycle of the products after about mm -hmm. three months or so when the skin is more stable, then I would say actually just try to go without the moisturizer. I think the best test is after you wash your face and you mm -hmm. dried it, mm -hmm. how does it feel? If it feels okay, like it, it may, it, it might be tight for a couple of seconds and then it sort of balances mm -hmm. itself and it feels okay. If it's not uncomfortable, that's fine. Um, and then you can just straight go straight to your sunscreen, just put that on. That's what I do in the morning. That's good to know. Thank you. Um, we will look forward to seeing you on the channel again. You're very welcome. I hope you found today's interview helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments because I always love to hear your thoughts and your experiences as well. And if you want to find out more about Dr. Tian, including discussing skin rejuvenation and enhancement options with her, I'll include her details in the description below. Next time on the Honest Channel, I'm gonna be reviewing the brand new Zuvi Halo Hair Dryer, which uses light instead of heat to dry your hair and it promises to restore its health and vitality, but it does not come cheap. So is it going to revolutionize the way we dry our hair or is it an expensive waste of time? Well, I'll be showing you how it works and sharing my verdict in my next video. For now, thanks for watching.